Such a good boy, Benji.
you, buddy. You want a treat? Frieza. You want a treaty? Lily, settle down. I'm too big for your boots. <laughs> Yeah. These guys would love it. Mmm, yeah. Yeah, they would. Oh, that was our branch. Branch of the hunger. Go. Oh, good boy, Chubby Chew. Rosie, good girl, Rosie. Good boy, Rover. Shadow, sit. Ah. Shadow, sit. Good girl, Shadow. Thank you, good girl. 
Oh boy, Enzo. You got too close. You got too close, Lily. I got it. Good boy. Good boy. So we could just do a couple of um, answers to some Hello. subscribers' questions. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is Luke. Maybe you could talk about the characteristics of an alpha dog. It's my understanding that fairness and consistency is as important as strength for a dog to be accepted as a leader of the pack. And that if Abra was a bully, the dogs wouldn't accept her as the leader. Dogs would see bullying as a weakness. Mm. I wouldn't say fairness. Fairness isn't really the right way to, to put it, but consistency would be. Yeah, because they're specifically talking about Abra as if they are saying that Abra is going to be the alpha. Yeah, so they think that, because you've mentioned a few times um, yeah. saying that that probably would be the case. Yeah, but it won't be from this. She's a puppy. She's just throwing a weight around. That's not and, um, showing any of those behaviours. Uh, there's a few people concerned that she's a bully. Oh, she's totally a bully. <laughs> okay. She's 100% a little uh, feisty firecracker. Yeah, cool. So, okay. I'm just giving you what everyone thinks and then you can, you can yeah. comment on it. Okay. So, uh, the natural qualities of an alpha um it would have been it now been, everybody has a funny thing about alphas so yeah. even if we just say you know that, well, to make a leader what's what's the funny thing about alphas wasn't the question alpha? it is but so maybe just you could just okay <laughs> go we're gonna dance around it's either leader alpha whatever you want to call it but the higher ranking pack member mm -hmm. you know i'm gonna call it alpha um, so, we'll talk about the, uh, the stereotypical qualities and then we'll talk about specifically where I think that question is leading and it's in relation to Abra and this particular pack. So, um, yeah, so there's an air of confidence in a dog that attracts the attention of the other dogs. Now, usually the alpha will not go and seek out approval from the other dogs. They will naturally have a trait that commands the attention of the other dogs. And that's what I was saying about, um, it would have been, well, I was about to say, it would have been good to see uh, Wallace here, because he had it. In his prime. Yeah, he, he, he had our, it. Our old boy. Yeah, our old boy Wallace. So he, didn't try to win anyone over ever he just went about his business and naturally all the other dogs just started following him and so that's a natural ear of of confidence and control and um no fear uh no anxiety no concerns just out there doing his thing uh so to break that down if we're talking about um 100 strength is in there 
I'm not saying it's a primary factor, but strength, they, they respect strength. If you can see Cruiser, the first dogs that he made friends with were all the big strong dogs. Uh, and so instantly he's recognizing. So just their... for everyone, that is Fredo, Roscoe, and Lily. Yeah, so, um, you know, instantly he's recognizing their size and strength on appearance. Uh, hasn't even taken into the mental strength at this point. The mental, mental strength has a huge part of it. Uh, once you get past the physical side, you can have a big, strong dog that doesn't have the mental side. And we'll maybe look at Banjo for that one because he's so young. Um, so instantly, Cruiser recognises him, but Banjo doesn't have the confidence to sit there and look over Cruiser's shoulders and just let Cruiser lick his face. Banjo sort of drops his head as if to say, oh, what's going on here? And he's being affected by the attention of Cruiser, which instantly will lower his perception of, of being that high-ranking dog. So um, it's a combination of a few things. So uh, fairness, I don't think is the right way to describe it. It'd more so be, um, you know, that, that consistent demeanor. Uh, as far as they treat the other dogs, all they're trying to do in, say, a wild environment, a wild pack, is just keep law and order. Um, you wouldn't describe the alpha as being either fair or picking on certain dogs. Yeah, fair or unfair, it doesn't come into the equation. What are they looking at and assessing? for why they would be, you know, um, targeting certain members of the pack. So they're the dogs that need the attention. They're the ones that need to be pulled in the line because they're the ones that are being underhanded and being cheeky with the pack. They're breaking the rules. They're upsetting the pack harmony. You know, they're the ones that are causing, you know, ripples in the, in the pack. So they're the ones that they get focused on. Um, now so a lot of pe so people can really read into um why dogs of a higher order um target certain dogs because i see a lot in the comments oh i saw um you know joey do this to banjo or i saw joey do this to enzo or i saw joey do this to miss violet or whatever mm. Now, when you hear those dogs' names, mm. you know exactly why Joey's doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but people at home will see that, and you know they don't they don't see everything that happens at the farm, yeah. and they may just pick up on that. But what I was trying to explain is, if you see a higher order higher order dog like Joey, she is yeah. um, having a, a bit of a snarl or a snap or a growl at a dog in particular and you think that is for no reason or it doesn't seem it is never for no reason it is for a very long-standing behavior that that dog is showing yeah so those are all the dogs that uh, don't have the confidence within themselves joey exudes confidence and independence and they all try to uh, take her out because she's smaller or she's you know fastest or she's you know anytime I'm out with Joey and, and the rest of the pack Joey's got nothing but eyes for me or for what I'm doing mm -hmm. so they all just try to run interference on her yeah and so that's that middle of the run pack just trying to jostle for position mm -hmm. and Joey's like not even acknowledging them like get out of my way I've got a job to do and so that's that um, sense of, you know, I'm not even going to enter into your game. I'm not even going to lower myself to, to that standard, which is what you'll see a lot of the dogs do. It looks like they're just aloof. It looks like they're, um, you know, they just look straight through the dogs or straight over the dogs. They're not engaging with them as if to say, hey, let's go play. That's a middle and lower ranking, you know, game to play when it comes to that kind of structure. Uh, it's not to say that the high ranking dogs don't play. We see all the dogs play, but um, it's not high on their agenda. So look at look at Rover, for example. Rover wants absolutely no responsibility whatsoever. He wants to just laze about and play in the sun throughout the eternity. You know, mm -hmm. that's all he, he desires to do. So he's more than happy to um, accept anyone else's high rank. He's not gonna contest it. He just wants to live that happy middle middle rank um, life. But then you've got a dog like Barney who has got a chip on his shoulder 
who wants to try to prove himself, but he doesn't have the qualities. You know, he, he's he's the one that's going about it the wrong way. He's actively trying to make everyone realise, hey, I'm I'm the big dog around here, but that's not the. So he's talking quality. the talk, not walking the walk. Well, he's trying to, but they're not buying it. Mm, okay. You know? He's he's trying to you know let everyone know, hey, respect me, but he doesn't understand that all he has to do is just walk around confidently, not engage in the other dogs, go about his business, and they'll start following him. You know, but he's getting, he's getting, bringing himself down by getting himself wrapped around the axles of trying to create rank. Um, so, so if we talk about Abra, which is the, cam uh, the question was originally designed around. So it's not just simply force, you know. The Abra is a very strong, tough dog independently, but she's learning about pack life at the moment. Um, <clears throat> she won't win anyone over just by bullying them they'll start avoiding her but they won't start respecting her or following her they'll just give her a wide berth so it's not the way to you know command respect in the pack um, she seems to get attracted to the dogs similarly to cruiser the dogs that um, Roscoe shows that he's trying to keep in line so you know Barney um, I think Diesel's just looks like a bit of a wild card to her, so she, she thinks it's fun and exciting because she uh, is looking for, <clears throat> you know, as a puppy, gets distracted easily and he's always running around chasing birds, so that's something that he, she likes to follow. But as far as Abra's concerned and, you know, being a little bit of a bully, at this stage she's not showing any traits that are, uh, you know, she's going to command respect anytime soon once she matures and once she gets older and when she's you know two or three years old that behavior will all change and she will be that really strong tough uh mentally strong dog that they will naturally start to follow but she won't be you know still doing what she's doing now to get that that's just her i think she's got a bit of a natural aura about her like you look at tank and chopper <clears throat> they are quite strong dogs and they're going to be really strong once they fill out a little bit more um, however they don't have the mental uh, game to be the top dog they're, they're they're just big cuddly teddy bears really um, if you look at you know pound for pound strength on these guys they'll they'll outdo most of the other dogs here however they don't have the mindset and the, the you know, mental drive to want to achieve that, let alone achieve it in the first place. So totally different. It's not just strength that, that you're looking at there. Um, so remind me, there was another part to that question I think I haven't mm. answered yet. There was a couple of parts in there. Um, talk about the characteristics of an alpha dog. It's my understanding that fairness and consistency is oh, as yeah. important as strength consistency. for a dog to be accepted as leader of the pack and that if Abra was a bully, the dogs wouldn't accept her as leader. Dogs would see bullying as a weakness. Yeah, which is what Barney doing. So that's exactly right. Um, <clears throat> so the bullying or, you know, actively engaging in trying to assert, hey, I'm, I'm top dog, you, you lose respect from that one. Uh, but yeah, the consistency in the way that they handle the situations, um, the, the rules that they enforce. It's a really big one for me to keep that consistency in front of all the dogs. And so, for example, one of the gate exercises, one of the things that I do is look for any of the dogs that are A, misbehaving, B, trying to scoot through without being called through, um, or, or C, you know, not giving me the eye contact and just looking for an opening and as soon as they get the go they'll they'll try and shoot through so all of those things that's where i get an indicator indication of okay you're not respecting this uh section here which which i'm controlling so then i take that as a personal offense to that dog so then we start working on some exercises but more importantly every other dog is watching that relationship as well mm. and so every other dog are going to see oh such and such just ran through you know what's going to happen here 
and then if you just ignore it and then second day, third day, fourth day in a row, they're getting away with it, you watch how many other dogs are going to just try and run past me. Mm. Because they're like, ah, oh, you've lost the control. You know, you don't, you don't, you're not, you're not taking charge of this and they'll just try to walk through you. So that's why so you, usually... So you've been doing, like, this is something that was really big when you were managing like 40 to, 40 to yeah. 60 dogs a day. Mm. Like this is only 20 dogs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a very small pack compared to the daycare scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was the biggest thing, wasn't it, is consistency because exactly. those, you know, 40 to 60 dogs were always watching to see how you handled those situations. Yeah, the biggest one was the quiet command. Quiet. And you had all 60 dogs and then, you know, I would say quiet and I'm just waiting for the very first dog to bark. And then as soon as they bark and I say no, I, I go over, grab them, um, you know, they realise, oh, how, how come you picked me out of all that? It's like, you're the first to bark after the quiet. But what it does is sends a huge message to everybody else. And everybody else is like, oh, I'm not barking. Yeah. You know, and then so the, it's initially... A, it, it seems like a nothing exercise because all it is is just saying a command waiting for yeah. um, them to speak but, up. But 90% of the effect of that exercise is having absolutely no contact with the other dogs. Mm. It's just showing in that group environment. I didn't see what happened. Nothing. So that, so that He's wouldn't just have, wouldn't have been uh, friendly. Chop telling Cruiser. Yeah. But then, you, you know, there you go. Cruiser's real cheeky. <laughs> Cruiser is one of those dogs that he's engaging in, you know, wanting the respect from all the other dogs. Chop doesn't trust him for a second. Nah, a second. <laughs> and look, he does it in such a chop way too, like... Yeah. I'm not going to, like, use my teeth, but I'm definitely going to use my body to move okay. you on. Um, so consistency, it's a really good point to, it's one of our um, members who asked this question, Crazy Canuck. I think that's what, it, the, uh, how you say it. Um, that's the name? Yeah. That's the, the name of the account. Yeah, the name of the account, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and, but consistency is a really big one. The point I wanted to make in that scenario. Yep is the fact that you're dealing with pack mentality, not just individual dog training. So, you know, a lot of people used to be amazed at the fact that I could get 60 dogs to go from full arousal barking to silent in a matter of one second. But it wasn't because I trained, you know, every single dog that particular command. It was because I never let a dog out of the bus without sitting for me. I never let them through the gate without waiting for, com- for permission. And that was it. You know, the only other time I'd do any formal training with them is if they were a little bit cheeky or showing behavior that was un- unsuitable. Um, but I, all I needed to do was establish, this is my area, I control this. You, you know, the only way you're gonna get through or come in is by responding to me. And that is just simple sit or a wait at the door. And then they all recognized that interaction and that relationship so when another dog barked after i said quiet they all saw me enforce nope that's not allowed and they all just went Whoop, okay i understand i've already respected you at these first two um, parts of the day so um, there was that instant respect there without having to train all 60 dogs through consistency each day we would do that exercise they would all learn exactly what it meant but it didn't mean that I had to individually go and train every single dog. So the importance of enforcing the rule in front of an audience is crucial when coming to um, you know, having those qualities as a leader as far as the pack's concerned and whether they're going to accept you uh, as, as their leader. So, so if you look at, say, a dog like Fredo, mm-hmm. For instance, in terms of yeah. consistency, hey, hey. if anybody does anything that um, is cheeky or out of order, mm. you know, in front of him or towards him, 
Um, he is consistent with everybody, correct? Ah, uh, yeah, it doesn't. He's not. He's not picking on anyone. Anyone who wants to. It's not like interference he, on him. Yeah, it's not like he only does it to Barney when Barney no. does it to him, yeah. or. What are you doing, mate? Eating the dirt. Must yeah. Be good dirt here. Uh, yeah, so it, it, he, he, again, uh, Fredo isn't going out of his way to interact with any other dogs. He, I throw the frisbee, he's running straight to the frisbee. Anyone else want to inter interfere with him, he'll deal with that dog directly. And so that's where most of the time, most of the other dogs just go, Whoop. Well, I'm not going to run interference with him. Hmm. Um, you know, so he has to, uh, you know, really have a genuine a genuine intention of you know you guys don't exist the frisbee is the only thing on my mind you know and they're going for it which is why they that's why the dogs that want to try and get uh climb up the ranks they go for dogs like that so Fredo, joey um, lily's lily's the exception to that rule um but the majority of the time that's that's what's going on lily lily and roscoe do it a little bit differently where um, they usually try to keep in line the dogs that I've shown that I'm working on. Mm. You know? See, that's where I, I see Lily and Roscoe and maybe even Abra. Abra um, definitely. But where they are, they, I'll, I'll they look to you. Different, uh, different difference between Abra and that one, but yeah, they look to me. They look to you and who is stepping out of line in terms of your rules, mm. you know, pack rules. Mm -hmm. And then they are doing what they think that you would want them to do, and that is enforce those rules. Correct. Whereas Fredo, I feel like he's just been a leader. Yeah. He's, well, you know. He, he, he is. He's, but, that's, but that's what I'm saying. So he's naturally... Um, commanding that role you know without thinking about it mm. he he's not he's not sitting there going right he's got no know, time I'm to be an enforcer in. no he's I'm, he's above that that's right so he he's just doing his thing you know mm. and anyone anyone who wants to try to take him off his his perch will you know be, be challenged directly straight back um <clears throat> but this is the thing with the pack is it, it, it this is how it is now and as we know mm. it changes all the time mm. yeah it doesn't usually change on the top ranks very often Hopi, cut it out it doesn't usually change on the top ranks very often but it changes all through the middle very regularly uh, especially with our pack being so young and the dogs coming into uh, maturity and and you know naturally falling into different positions but you don't usually see a fall from grace from those top ranking members so like the freddos the roscoes um you know lily's found a confidence and and come into that role but again she's she, like you say she's doing it because she's doing it to all the dogs that i've interrupted and disturbed play because it wasn't up to standard or or whatever so she sees that and go right you're on my list Okay, mm. you're on my list. It's like mm. they walk around behind me with a notepad. Yes. You know, you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, you? Yeah. Okay, no worries. Um, so, you know, there you go. So, Fredo's just standing there. He walks up to say, oh, you're such a big, strap boy. He's like, get out of my face. I don't, I don't need this love, you know? Yeah. Whereas if someone did that to Barney, Barney would sit there and go, yeah, a little to the left. Yeah, a little to, you know what I mean? Yeah. He would just totally absorb it all and go, yeah, see this, guys? Yeah, a bit over here. Whereas he's just like, get away from me. I don't have time for this. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's where, that's where the difference is. Another question from Karen. Okay. Karen. Yep. Um, KP, who is one of our members. Uh -huh. uh, does the pack act, act differently around Cruiser like they did Chancey Boy? Uh, no, not like they did Chance, but... Uh, yes, di differently. Di differently, yes, but not like Chance. So, again... Cruiser recognises the strength in the pack, but then disrespects anyone who doesn't have that strength. So if we just saw Chopper, um, you know, see through Cruiser's objective there, and Cruiser 
is a little bit on the cheeky side and uh, he thinks it's fun to come in and nip the other dogs, which is the way that he's learnt to play. Uh, so it's not it's not the the best in a pack environment and uh, it's definitely not something that we accept here. So he, he does um, get redirected quite a bit when he when any of the games are involved. So for example now once uh, he's in running around we minimise how much of that activity is happening because we know he's likely to step out of line. Um, <clears throat> so it's a balanced game for him. But my point is, with Chopper, Chopper is one of those dogs that, like I said, he's a big, strong dog, but he's a puppy and he's the sweetest, most innocent um, personality and mindset. He has no objective of, you know, trying to assert any dominance. He um, he went through a mounting thing a couple of months back, but it was very, you know, um, light-hearted. Like he didn't have much in it. So it was more of a I'll test this out. Oh, it didn't work out. Well, whatever, you know. And he's got a behaviour that is just yep. I'm, I just want to do my thing. I want to be a good boy. Uh, I'm not trying to step out of line. He's got a, I, I feel but, like he's got a really strong moral compass. Mm, mm, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> and and Cruiser... Cruiser is totally opposite of that. <laughs> yeah. He's showing the behaviour that he's opposite of that at the moment. And Purely on the basis that Cruiser doesn't know how to behave properly. Yeah, in a, in yeah. A but, but, but Chop... Chop is taking offence to it. He's just like... Because he's such you, a good boy. Yeah, he, he's just like, you are going to bring us all down. <laughs> Get away from me. I'm not going to be... <laughs> and he does it in such a unique chopper way, doesn't but he? Does he? It, he does it in a way of strength. So this is mm. the difference between him and Barney. Mm -hmm. Barney doesn't have the respect. All of a sudden, Chopper is saying, I'm not I'm not happy with this. Mm. And so instead of showing, um, showing teeth and saying, look how big my weapons are, you know, mm. anything like that, Chopper just stands there majestically and just puts his chest over and goes... Don't do that to me. And Cruz is like, oh, okay. And you can recognise it. But then he tries to go around the side and he's like, I'm still Sometimes walking. he personally escorts him. Like well, that's what I mean. He's just... 20 he, metres away. Yeah, he's just walking along next to him going, hmm. no. <laughs> you know? Doesn't have to raise his voice. Doesn't have to yeah. show his muscles or his teeth. He's just standing there with his presence and just commanding that, that message, you know? It's silent. You know, there's no noise. Mm. And... Um, yeah, a little bit there in the beginning when Cruiser first came on board and I saw Chopper doing it, I, thought, I was a little bit nervous, personally, me, mm. that um, something was going to erupt, you know, because I could see from Chopper's body language yeah. that he was not happy with it. Mm. But now I know Chop and I can see what he's doing. Um, nothing erupts. Um, mm. He's very well, calm. Uh, you're right. Nothing erupts. But I believe it's because Cruiser doesn't want a confrontation. Mm. So Cruiser's trying to get one over him and, you know, maybe nip him in the rear end and run away before he can do anything about it. Mm. But that's where I believe that Cru Chopper is, is showing strength there and saying, mm -mm, not to me. And Cruiser's respecting that. Mm. Yeah. If Cruiser wasn't respecting that, then I think that it would escalate because Chop's not going to back down to it. He's just sitting there strong, as if to say, Bill's mm. in your court now. Mm. You've got the message. What are you going to do with it? Um, and that's where Barney runs into trouble all the time because mm. that's what Fredo says to him. That's what Roscoe says to him. And Barney just sits there and goes... <laughs> <laughs> and so it always ends up in something. Um, yeah. The only reason why I allow that, or why I continue to allow that with these guys and Barney is because... Um, Barney is losing those encounters every time. Mm. And so it's like, okay, well, I was just going to tell him not to do that. And they've just told him not to do that. But if it got to the point where Barney started fighting back and he may be starting to win some of those mm. battles, that's when I'd step in and say, nope, you didn't get to win this one. Mm. You know what I mean? But the natural... Um, and just for everyone at home, when we say that you allow these encounters to happen... Like it's an encounter, it's not a fight. No, yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying, you know, because people might think, oh, well, are these things that we're not seeing on, on videos? 
But no, um, Fredo is literally just giving what you same, all see. Same, same thing he just did to Enzo. Yes. And yeah. Enzo's come over and he's like, ah, leave me alone. Yeah. Except with um, Bunny, Bugger Bunny, off. Bunny, Bunny usually tries to nip Fredo on the side. <laughs> Yeah, being being a bit cheeky. Yeah. But the subtle ones, yeah, they're every day. Yeah. And and the other thing is, uh, you know, if we look at if we relate this to, say, Shadow and Miss Red, uh -huh. they're very similar. In, you know, they they will toe the line when they have to, mm. or where they feel that they can't get away with something. But then as soon as they feel they can get away with something, oh, all well, bets are off. You know, gloves are off, shirts off, like, party <laughs> time, you know, pants are out of town, we're going we're gonna to tear this place up. You know, that's their attitude. And yeah. so it's, it's a, a difficult one. It's a difficult one for most people to acknowledge that one mm. because 95% of the time, they're the ones doing this. Look how good I am. Look, 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 how, look how good of a, of a little puppy I am. And you're like, yeah, good dogs. So they're like, yeah, yeah, see, yep, yeah, see. And then you go around the corner. Ah, oh, he's back. Oh, look how good I am. Yeah. <clears throat> and so that's that behaviour that we're talking about with Miss Red where it's, you know, lick, 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 ah, lick, 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 lick. And, and they're just sort of playing a real, you know, advanced game of psychological warfare. <laughs> you know? So you look, at, you look at Roscoe, you look at Lily, they clearly take... A 2IC role, mm. right? Mm. They acknowledge that Fredo's a um, powerful figure in the pack, but they have ultimate respect for me. Mm. Fredo doesn't give me that respect. Mm. Fredo is like, eh, I know, I know you outrank me, but I don't need you. Mm. You know, he's always given that. Mm. You know, he, he definitely. People uh, are gonna feel. Ma some people me. might feel shocked to hear that. Well, you know, again, this is. This is just Fredo's natural demeanor. So mm. when we were training Fredo and when we were rehabilitating Fredo, I had all that respect. There was absolutely no question. You know, he he understood the rules. He understood my position. Yeah, this he, is a good point, I think. Yeah, he 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 followed um, yes. every direction, no problem at all. But now Fredo is on the other side of that, and he's got the ultimate freedom. That's right. He gets he gets all the luxuries. Mm -hmm. He gets. Um, we treat you know, him like he's treat, a king. We treat him like royalty. That's right. Say, he's yeah. an old boy and he's a good boy, generally um, speaking. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But where the behaviour has um, crept in, and this is, this is, we're going off topic here, but <laughs> this is a very key point that what I tell people when we do dog training is everyone has to be consistent with the dog as in all family members have to be consistent with yes. the rules of, of um, when dealing with the dog otherwise they play mum and dad off you and uh, and this is exactly what's going on with Fredo <laughs> so Fredo gets away with all sorts of things with Arnie Sam mum so, yeah that's you <laughs> yeah behind the camera um, <clears throat> so all of a sudden Fredo's been introduced to a world where uh hold on i actually get a little bit more from from this one over here so you know maybe i'll maybe i'll just try and avoid you and go to you instead <laughs> which um is very innocent in the way like it's not something that Fredo's way of dealing with Cruiser. Mm -hmm. So um, you can see that that's a subtle message, isn't yeah, exactly. it? Yeah, exactly. That, that's a clear communication. Don't try your little shenanigans on me. Yeah. Oh, look at him, he's so beautiful. <laughs> he's a mama's boy. He's a hundred percent a mama's boy. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> But but at the same time, it'd probably be different if he was in his prime and he was oh, a he was a young boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's eight years old, and Rottweilers don't even live that long, and he's no, had well, such a hard life. That... Let, let me let me finish what I was <laughs> going to say here because it's a it's a big no no for what I am explaining here that you shouldn't do this because mm. then you do get this mindset of 
Yeah, you you got a high rank, but you also in a pigeonhole over here. Mm. When I'm in this environment, mm. you know that those rules don't exist anymore. Mm. You know, and that's the whole playing mum and dad off each other. So it's a bad thing if you are trying to eliminate a behaviour. Don't get me wrong. If Fredo was still showing any of those behaviours yeah. when he was in rehab and before he was yes. accepted into the family, I would be jumping on him. We Absolutely. We are talking about tiny little the most minuscule cheeky things, things that yeah. we, we allowed Wallace and Charlie Correct. to do. So we're giving so, him that old dog that's right. entitlement. And so And it's a is, massive um it means a lot to him. It means you a know? massive amount to him. But but again, this is just giving him the 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 best life we can and and, and I accept that he's an old dog and, and there are certain things that go along with that. So one of the one of the things that I suppose we could point out in what I see him do, let's say he's got the toy and he's running off to the dam with it. And I say, Fredo, as if to say, come over here. And he looks at me while still running to the dam and then looks at Sam <laughs> and then turns and comes to me. You know, so he's looking for an outrank. He's oh. looking for, are you going to save me on this, mum? And I'm looking at him going, yeah, yeah, she's not looking at you, you know? And then so he comes over, I'm like, yeah, good boy. But if he didn't come to me at all, then I have to interrupt that. But I'm okay with him just going, oh, is there a better option? Oh, there's <laughs> yeah. no better option? Okay, I'm, I'll come over. You're not taking it personally. I'm not taking it personally yeah. at all. If he was a one-year-old, if he was Barney doing that, mm -hmm. uh, I'd be jumping on him straight away. <laughs> as soon as he looked away from me, I'd be saying no. Nah, <laughs> don't look for other options. Come straight to me, you yeah. know? So I'm teaching him the rules from a, a very different yeah. standpoint. But I know for him, this is just part of him getting old and getting those freedoms and getting that respect and getting that royal treatment of, you've earned this freedom. Yeah. You know, you've gone through the hard yards. Now you're an old dog. We love you to death. You've we, lived we in want, a pound for we, years. Yeah, we want you to just have whatever titles uh, and, and, you know, luxuries are associated yeah. with living the life that yeah. you've lived till till gets the same yeah tilly gets the same thing yeah. tilly does the same thing <laughs> so tilly but for tilly it's like i'm gonna run and, and you know bark at these goats and i'm like tilly and she's like looking at me yeah 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 yeah. but i'm just gonna do this first and then and then run back around if tilly was a young dog when she first yeah. came here i would have instantly stopped oh, that. she could stop on a dime if i told that's her that's right she never got away with anything Nothing. yeah but now it's just that simple case of you're old you know, yeah. you, you won't be... But I also feel like forever. they are kind of going... This is what I love to do. And I could do it for you. Do you really want me to do it? You I know? know she could do it. And if, yep, I, that's and if exactly I gave right. her the right tone, that's she 100% right. would do exactly. it. Exactly. So it's, it's but, you know, again, not one of those things that I take personally. I notice it and I know where their head's at. Yep. And I can see that, um, uh, you know, it's happening, but it's all part of giving them that that respect in that position, you know? Yeah. Um, the dogs that do not get away with it at all, <laughs> uh, you know, your, your tank, your chopper, your band. All the adolescents. Yeah. Because remember, Red, we've got, how many? Barney. We've got like 10, I think, now with yeah. Abra, oh. um, that are like young dogs. Yeah. It's pretty much, um, <laughs> it's pretty much all the others, bar Rover and Matilda. Rover, Matilda. So it's pretty much, it's pretty much every single other dog. Oh, and Joey. And Maggie? Mm, no, Maggie, Maggie is different because she's deaf. I would definitely stop Maggie a lot more often, but I have to wait till she looks at me. Yeah, okay. So that's a different scenario. Mind you, once she does look at me, that's it. If I give her a command, that's it. You know, she. So just quickly, you were saying Rover and Matilda. Matilda, yeah. And why? Just for everyone at home, because yeah, that might be a, everyone might be saying yeah. to their screen, "Hang yeah. on, why? just why? step back there. Yeah. Why, why are you singling those two dogs out of twenty? Yeah. So I am, you know, formal military style. <laughs> what I say goes with yeah. all those other dogs. With Rover and Matilda, they genuinely 
are trying to do the right thing. They're not, mm. They don't have an agenda at all. They're sitting there going, I just want to do the best I can, I can do. Don't want to put a foot wrong. So if they actually do put a foot wrong, it's usually unintentionally. Mm. So it's like, yes, I can be a little bit more sloppy That with is them. the main point there. It is yeah. unintentional. I either didn't hear you right, yeah. or maybe I've misinterpreted. I've done something else other than what you asked. Like, like they've mis they've just misunderstood. Yeah, so it's not something that they, they don't display any sort of behavior that I need to have them on a dime, like turning on a dime. They mm. they always just going about their business. Mm. You know, like even Tank and Chopper, a, a, a who good. are goodest boys, mm -hmm. there are still moments for instance, like when you're you they've got a toy and you've asked them to come back to return the toy so that everyone can yep. have another throw, throw again, yeah. um, they w will make the choice of, no, yeah. I actually just want to keep this toy to myself. Yeah. I'm not sure that you understand, but this is my toy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If I give it to you, you're just going to throw it again. You yeah. Know? So Whereas... it's not like, you know, it's not naughty, naughty, but, no. but it still is But it's still a relationship because yeah. they're looking at me and they're... But, you know, they're not doing what Fredo is doing and saying, hey, can anyone else get me out of this? Mm. Like, uh, can you, you yes. know, protect me on this one, mum? Whereas, um, you know, his intention is still like, okay, you've asked me, well, she's not going to outrank you, so I'm going to do what you say. He's not saying, oh, no, stuff you both, I'm going to the dam. Yeah. That's a totally different scenario. Yeah. But Tank and Chopper, and the reason why that is a little thing for them as far as the toy is concerned is because they have displayed, you know, almost exemplary behavior all round, except for possession. Yes, um, guarding. Yeah, guarding behavior. So uh, a little bit of toy aggression when they first got here. Yeah. And so instantly we went, okay, this is the... And um, for everyone at home, because I don't, I don't think I, I did um, post any videos of that, but um, it was pretty crazy. They went from oh, yeah. zero to a hundred yeah, in a split so, second. And so they went, the problem with the way that they did it um, they didn't give any warning signs. Mm, that's right, yes. So they just went from happily chewing, chewing a toy yeah. to full-blown launch and lunge, full teeth bearing, snapping. Oh, and the first time we saw it, we were just like, Whoa! Whoa. They were like Tyrannosaurus Rexes. Yeah, it's like, what happened there? Yeah. And they did it to each other quite a bit. And I remember initially they would, you know, really go hard at each other. And yeah. I was like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? None yeah. of this. So I instantly went over and started taking toys off them as if to say, you know, expecting them to growl or do something to me, which they never did. They always showed mm. respect to me, which was a great quality of theirs. Mm. Uh, but any other dog coming through, it changed from full blown lunge. And then they realized, oh, I'm not allowed to do this. Mm. So then it went to, is dad watching? Okay. Well then I'm going to growl. I'm going to show you my teeth. I'm going to, uh, oh, dad's watching. Yeah. No, 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 I wasn't, I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> Uh, you know, leave my toy alone. So very much an internal possession yeah. issue. But you now, know, and just I can give a good example because the last video That's posted true, um, was the the pool party yesterday. You know where we had we cooked up on the Barbie oh. the salmon. And then, but uh, Chop Chop, Chop was in the planter and, pot yeah. with his toy. So that's what it is now. Yeah. Where he might go off with his toy, and he doesn't want anyone to. Yeah. So he's putting himself in a position where no one will hassle him. Mm. Mm. Bit of a standoff over there. Yeah. The two well, brothers and. Yeah, let's see. Ooh. Oof. Yeah. Look at look at Chop. He... Mm, no, he's losing that one. He's got some back up there. No. No, Cruiser won that one. Mm, choppy two. See. Yeah. Oh boy, mate. He's such a lover, though. Yeah. I, I thought I thought he was um, going to be a bit stronger than that, but he didn't. Yeah. It's good, buddy. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Man, it means I'll sort him out for you. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy, mate. <laughs> I think he came over. I'll tell you what happened there. So, Chop's been winning those interactions every single time. But uh, Tank ran over there. And I think just didn't realize who it was, barked and just came over and go, oh, it's you, Cruiser. But then Tank didn't really have any agenda with that, just misinterpreted or didn't see who it was or whatever. 
But then Chop's gone over as if to say, yeah, that's my brother. And then Tank's going, oh, I don't have any beef. And sort of walked off. And then Cruiser's got strength from that and thought, Cruiser's interpreted that as, oh yeah, I just um, scared you off. What about you? And then all of a sudden, Chop's there to back up his brother. His brother's just left him. <laughs> and then he's standing there going, hey, hold on a second. I was, I was backing you up, you know? So he lost his nerve, but it made Cruiser grow a bit stronger. And then um, Chop found himself in a bit of no man's land. Don't worry, Chop Chop. Oh, buddy. He's like, so long as my spot on the couch is still safe. Uh, speaking, of, speaking of spot on the couch, <laughs> last night, I was like, right, guys, time to go to the toilet. Chop's just like lying there on the couch. I'm like, I know you hear me, Chop. You know, gave him a pat. Hi. I'm like, toilet time. Let's go, mate. I get to the door, all the dogs are filing out, and there's just Chop leaning, like his, his head leaning over the back, like, look at me. You know, maybe if I stay still, you won't, you won't, um, won't make me go. Yeah. So no, I went, had to go get him. Grab him off the couch, walk him to the door. And then I uh, like three steps from the door and I walk to the door and you know, open it as if to come out. And he walks right up to the door and then sharp right hand out, straight onto the couch. I'll just stay here. I'm like, no chop, out here. And then the tail just hits the wagon. But it's raining yeah, out yeah. there. And so I get him again. Nope, come on, let's go. We're going to the toilet. And then as I go to the door again, I let him go to come out and he goes the other way to the other chair. The chopper, get out! <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay, okay. Oh, so it's a serious one. Yeah, he's like, oh, exactly. Okay, I'm like, come geez. on, mate. I know. I thought, it's it was, I thought it was pretend we time. Oh, he was putting it on. <laughs> you always get sidetracked on these ones. So, back, I don't even think we've answered the what, question. What was the question? The original question was, um, does the pack see Cruiser differently, like Chancy Boy? Oh, we're way off topic. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about toilet time. <laughs> Someone asked um, a really interesting question, and I have to say it's something that I've had been thinking about. Yeah. But um, so cats usually wag their tail like that when they're annoyed, or you know, it's like a warning. Yeah. Um. But they commented that um, kitty does it a lot. Yeah, I didn't think that that was a thing, and it was just for a warning. Heaps of people when we first um introduced her to the pack, they all the cat people were like, "Oh, that's." You know, and I remember watching that documentary, that cat documentary, and they said the same thing. So I just wondered, is it that, mm. oh, it's not Kitty. always Kitty. that, or somebody said, could Kitty. it possibly be that Kitty just, she's used to dogs and... Well, yeah, for her, she, she does it yeah. in a lot more relaxed state. She does, doesn't she? She doesn't, um, it's not a real threat for her. No, she does look, she's... She, Goodness, 
funny. She she really she really loves the dogs. Yeah, she does. It's like they're her comfort zone, which is yeah. G'day guys, so we just had a big rain. Expecting rain for another couple of days. So whenever we have a really solid downpour, I've got to go and check all the drains around the property, make sure they haven't clogged up all the leaf litter lately with all the trees shedding their leaves. I want to make sure that the drains don't clog up and then the flood over the top and damage the fences. So let's go check them out. Got a little offside with me. Let's go, mate. I'm gonna grab a shovel. Head up the back. Come on, buddy. We got work to do. It is what is time? About six o'clock, six p.m. Come on, mate. But we're gonna get a little bit more rain by the looks of it. And if the uh, if the drains clog up, it does mean because of our fences. It's not very good for having a lot of water pressure leading up against them. So that snake mesh uh, <clears throat> catches the water and all the debris when the water builds up and all the weight pushes the fences over. So these ones are pretty crucial. They're in the perimeter fences to help the water get off the property. So it's just one of those things that we have to do here every time it rains. Especially it's been a while and there would have been a lot of leaf litter. That is on the ground, so as soon as you get a big downpour, it just all runs and then the leaf litter blocks the drain. So let's go check it out. Hopefully it's not too bad. There we go, let's go for a drive. Come on, in the car. That's it, mate. Yeah, good job. Yep, up you get. Jill's getting in. She knows how to take a ride to the top of the hill. That's it, mate. Scooch over. Yeah, that's it, mate. Alright mate, how we get? We got a puddle here. You wanna jump in the puddle? Come on. Wolfie. Come on, buddy. Oh. Rightio, so we've got. You need a hand too. Come on, darling. Oh, there we go. So we got all this bushland here with all these trees and all the water catchment comes to this drain here. And as we can see, oh, Enzo knows what to do in that puddle. Have a lie down, mate, that's it. Have a lie down. So this is a drain here. Maybe maybe Dad will do it, darling. Yeah, Dad, Dad, because it's a lot of sediment here. 
You gonna help me? Oh, yeah. still some thunder. Rightio, so that's it. The drain yeah. there. So let's find the edge and get rid of this water. So there you go, all the leaf litter just leans up against the edge of it. And then all the sediment and dirt and soil and mud has got nowhere to go. And this is quite difficult to do one-handed on a backbreaker shovel. Big one would have been all right. I need to put the phone down, do a before and after. What do you think, mate? So, as you can see, that is a drain, and it is buried pretty good. Oh, well done, buddy. Good job. You'll be a good helper in a few years. <clears throat> I'm always surprised to see just how much debris gets washed down to this drain from this hill here. But as soon as the leaf litter, you can see, the leaf litter, the sticks from all the leaves, all the trees dropping their leaves, and they bank up. And once they block this drain, the mud and the water has got nowhere to go. And it just pulls up and it spills over the top. As you can see, the snake boundary fence here. Oh, we've had a blowout here. So it's filled up and gone over this way and then washed out. So let's hope we haven't caused any damage on the other side of this fence here. Oh, yep, it's exposed my pipe. We do, we've got a little bit of wash out here. Hey, mate. So we've got a little bit of repairing to do, but it seems that even though my help was dropping the handle in the mud, oh, thunder. We'll get this out of the way so that it clears most of it up. And then we'll come back tomorrow and do a better job because we're about to get rained on. I've got one more drain up the top of here. Okay, mate. So this is another drain. As you can see, it's completely filled up as well. So this is a 
secondary to take the weight off that one at the bottom. But again, look at this. Look at how much leaf litter is here. It's about seven inches thick. And then there's a drain under here. You wanna come out? Here we go. You wanna come out? I gotta keep digging. Wolfie, I'm gonna keep digging there for a little bit. You wanna come out? Come on, buddy. Come on, the green's setting in now. Lily, we're not going anywhere just yet, mate. No, nah, Lily, settle down. Let's see if we can set something up here. Okay, maybe, maybe like this. What's going on, buddy? There we go. Drain comes out the other side there. It's raining now, buddy, isn't it? There we go. Oh, should we go back? Yeah, okay. Here we go. Look at you, Doug. Really messed up the, the seats here, haven't we? Hello, Miss Red. Oh, that's old, mate. It's empty. You ready? There we go. Press some buttons. You don't have to do this all the time. It's only once you've had a bit of a spell, then you get a big downpour. So we had a big thunderstorm this afternoon. And we haven't had a heavy rain like that in a while. So that's when you get the water run. And you can see all the tracks here where the water has just run off the edge there. When you get heavy flow like that, that's when all the drains block up. Righto, mate, you ready? Move over. Yeah, we need it on full. Oh, on performance. That's my boy. Put it on performance. Ready, right, seatbelt. Seatbelt will be. Seatbelt. Oh, that was lightning. Watch out, Till. Till he move over a little bit, darling. There we go. There we go, we're in. Are we ready? Are we ready? Go over to the other ones in the in the front paddock. Oh, I may as well. We're out. We're wet and we're muddy. You may as well, eh? No, you don't think so. You don't think so? Oh, I think we should. Down the front here, though. You 
across the front of here too. That one's good, still good to go. Oh yeah, see all the cows? Yeah, moo. Yeah, all the cows out in the rain, aren't they? Hey, you wanna sit down, mate? Yeah, can you sit down for me so we can keep going? That's it. Oh, good job, mate. Good job. Let's go check the others. Pretty good along the front here. This grass catches most of the trees. Plus, there's nowhere near as many trees on this front section. So, the mower gets a lot of it too. Where is this other one? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's good too, that one. Alright, oh, no, let's check the other corner. Stay sitting down for me, buddy. Stay sitting down. That's it, good job. Dedicated old chubber. He does well. Hey, we're almost back. I'm having a strike here with uh, my staff. They say they're not happy with the working conditions. They're saying, stuff this, I'm out. I don't want to work anymore. I'm cold, I'm wet, and I'm hungry. Come on, guys. I'll leave those shovels in the back there for tomorrow. Oh, your bike. Okay. Yeah, okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. We're swapping bikes, I see. There's a hard right there. Okay, yep, I got this one. You get that one. Good job, team. Just finished. In time for the light to disappear. Yeah, you want that one? I'll take this one. That's it. Good job, buddy. You're my little helper. Watch where you going. Where you going? Where you going, Wolfie? Where you going, mate? Watch where you going. <laughs> you got to steer. That was hard work. Oh, there's that lightning again. Oh, 
Here we go, mate. We're going to rinse off before we go inside. We're all muddy. All the dogs are having a good drink. Bit of fun, mate. Rinse off before we go inside, buddy. There you go, buddy. There we go. What? All right, mate. Oh, you got a big spider on you. Look at that. Look at the size of that spider. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, did you see that, mate? That was huge on your hand. That was awesome. Look at him. What do you think of that, mate? You had a big spider on your hand. I know, I saw it. Big huntsman. My yeah, he was on your hand. And you were so brave, weren't you? That was great. Don't touch him again. No, that's all right. Where'd he come from? He must have been on your bike. Spider, all right. Yep, that's a spider. Oh, there he goes. There he is. Yeah, it's a spider, mate. That's a spider, all right. It's a huntsman. Yeah, he was on your hand too, wasn't he? Yep, look at that. Look how big your hand is compared to how big he is. Don't touch him. No, 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 no. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Yep. Good boy, mate. That was awesome. Yeah, spider. He's on the boot. There he goes. He's on the back of my boot there. Spiders are one of the leading causes of death this spider in particular, actually, the huntsman. Oh, Everyone bah, thinks it's a joke, bah, bah, but it's not. Oh, oh, what was that? He just squirted out all that there. Is that where he's doing a poo? I've never seen him do that before. Whoa, that's a big one. That'll be a big bang soon here. There we go. You're right, mate. You're right. Yeah, that was a good one. Wasn't it? Hey? That was a good one, buddy. Yeah, all right. So, huntsman spiders. If they bite you, you're not going to die. However, they do cause a lot of deaths, and it's because they're big and they're hairy and they're fast, and they get in your car, and while you're driving down the highway, they jump out at you and people crash. True story. Hello, mate. Okay, let's go. We'll bring this spider somewhere where he's safe because he's looking for a way out. Let's go and take him somewhere where he's going to be nice and happy. Maybe on one of the trees because he's about to go in the boot. Yep. He's going to find a nice happy spot in my boot here in a second. Which is going to make for an interesting uh, morning tomorrow to make sure he's not there. Oh, he's going in, he's going in. Don't go in, mate, don't go in. Ah, oh, don't go in there, buddy. That's it. I'm going to put you in the garden here. Here we go. Here we go, go in there. There we go, mate. There we go. Let go of my boot. That's it. Let go of the boot. Oh, no, he's stuck. Oh, no, there we go. There you go. What do you reckon, mate? He's a big spider, isn't he? Yeah, he's a good one. She. Pretty sure that's female. Okay, Wolfie, let's let it, let it go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, that's it, good job. Come on, mate. It's time to get cleaned up inside, eh?